I'm Dave and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the New Forest. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're at Fritham which is a little village uh, sort of halfway between Fording Bridge in the west and Cadnam in the east just off the B3078 in the north of the forest. Now we have been here before for a video but in that walk we sort of concentrated uh, on a route that took us to the west. Today we're going to be doing a, a roughly five and a half mile circular walk, predominantly in the north and northeast. So we'll be starting off in the village, heading down to Eyworth Pond, and then along a track up to Long Cross Plain, and then up to Piper's Wait, the highest point in the New Forest, and then along the uh, Wiltshire Hampshire border, and then back through the ancient Eyeworth wood. Now I'm filming middle of July. It's a glorious sunny morning. The weather is perfect for walking. So do come along with us. Well, I've parked my car at a Forestry Commission car park on the edge of the village. It's quite a, a small little settlement. Uh, the name comes from well, Frith is Old English for edge of forest and Ham is sort of an area of cultivated land. It's, it's not actually mentioned in the Doomsday Book, but uh, I think it was recorded or first mentioned in the 13th century, at which time it was attached to the manor of South Baddersley in the south of the forest near the coast until uh, about 1429. Now it's probably best known for its pub, <laughs> the Royal Oak. And I see that it uh, recently won an award. It was voted uh, Country Pub of the Year 2021 by the Good Pub Guide. And I would mention that uh, just as you turn into the, the village, look out for a magnificent white house, Fritham Lodge, on the outskirts of the, uh, the village. It uh, dates to 1671 and it may have been one of uh, Charles II's hunting lodges. Anyway, we're going to start our walk by initially heading uh, northwards uh, and our first port of call is going to be Eyeworth Pond. Well, it really is quite glorious. I'm uh, heading down a little road towards the pond and just behind me here, um, many years ago, was once the site of a a factory, believe it or not. It was, uh, well, from the 1860s to the 1920s, uh, there was a factory here that specialised in making smokeless gunpowder for sporting guns. And the company name was uh, Schultz, and at one time it was the largest nitro compound gunpowder factory in the world. There were well over 100 staff here and something like 50 to 60 buildings. Indeed, it supplied 75% of the world's annual consumption of gunpowder for sporting purposes. Little of it remains now. There are a couple of houses. I think it was the, the superintendent's house and the gatekeeper's lodge. Going back to the car park at Fritham, just as you leave, you might spot an unusual metal object in the undergrowth. And it's actually an old post box for the factory. And it was positioned there so that the postman didn't need to go all the way from the village town to the factory itself. And it now acts as a, a sort of memorial to the place. And here we are at Eyeworth Pond. Isn't that beautiful? Now it was actually um, created uh, by the factory between 1870 and 1880 to hold water needed during the, the manufacturing process for the gunpowder and it was actually made by damming up the existing Latchmore Brook. So obviously whilst the factory is long gone we have been left with this quite gorgeous pond. I'm never sure when a pond becomes a lake. I think it's supposed to hold six million gallons when it was originally built. I'm trying to remember, I think lakes, aren't they usually quite um, deep, whereas ponds tend to allow light to reach the bottom, but it is so beautiful here. Now, if you're lucky, you might spot a mandarin duck. They're very colourful critters. There's not many of them here, 20 or 30 perhaps, 
and they were first seen here in the, the 1960s. Well, we're now making our way along a track away from the pond that's lovely and shaded. And an interesting little thing down here on the left, hopefully you'll be able to see it because it is quite uh, dark underneath all these trees. Now if you look on a, an ordnance survey map, this shows up just to the north east of the pond as Irons Well or Chaley Beat. I'm not quite sure how you pronounce that, but it means a natural spring with iron salts. Anyway, here it is, fenced around with wooden railings. And it's been known as Irons Well since at least the 18th century when it appeared on an old Richardson King and Drivers map of the New Forest. And this sort of uh, <laughs> brown, rusty red colour of the water is very much due to the, um, the, the iron deposits that uh, are around here. And in years gone by, this sort of tea-coloured water was considered a remedy for sore eyes, bad legs and numerous other ailments. Indeed, it was originally called uh, Leper's Well and um, was often used as a cure for, for leprosy. But most interesting, well for me anyway, was that the water was considered a good cure for mange in dogs. You know, in a book published in the 1890s on holy wells, it was recorded that there was a wooden structure here with a, a board on top and basically you drop your dog in it and it would come out the other side. <laughs> now, uh, Logan, do you fancy um, testing it out for us? No, I don't think he's that keen. <laughs> Well, this track that uh, I'm following now, heading uphill away from the pond, is actually called Gunpowder Mill Road. And it was uh, built specifically to take the potentially dangerous gunpowder away from uh, the um, centre of the, the village. A beautiful scene behind me here. There's some ponies happily uh, grazing away. In fact, um, I was reading that uh, during the Second World War, there was a, a searchlight based round about here. I have had a, a little look to see if I could see any evidence, perhaps a, a concrete for the hard standing of um, the actual searchlight itself, but there's nothing there. I mean, it, it probably would have been um, uh, taken there on wheels anyway. <laughs> Just had an enjoyable meander uphill along the track. Now, just before the track peters out and joins the uh, B3078 or Roger Pennyway, it's, it's also known, we're going to uh, head uh, eastwards onto Long Cross Plain because there's a few things I want to have a look at there. So, just behind me uh, here, you can probably see we're going to head that way past those grazing ponies. Well, we're now on Long Cross Plain. It's one of the most uh, open areas of the New Forest and quite high, so there's quite a breeze, which uh, is great for me because it's, it's cooling me down. You can tell we're quite high up because there's a, a trig point behind me here, which we've just bagged. 
There's something like 22 trig points, I believe, in the whole of the New Forest, and I guess Logan and I have uh, seen most of them. So there's one other thing I want to show you while we're up here, and that's over to the north, another pond to have a look at. And this is our second pond of the walk, Long Cross Pond. It's very popular with the livestock, ponies, donkeys and cattle. A couple of reasons really. Firstly, you don't tend to get too many members of public out here. And secondly, well, I'm filming in the middle of July and as you can see, it's, um, it's fairly full. So it rarely dries out. You can see there's some Canadian geese happily paddling about in the center there. Well, just before we cross Roger Penny Way and head further north, I had to say hello to this little critter, little boy by the looks of things. I'm not going to get any closer than this. There's quite a few uh, donkeys this uh, part of the, the forest and that one clearly only a matter of weeks old. And there's a, another one there following its mum. It just shows how dangerous it is here. I mean, these little youngsters here and there's a, although it's a B road, it is a very busy road. And although there is a, a 40 mile an hour limit, uh, not everybody unfortunately adheres to it. Well, this is the highest point in the whole of the New Forest, Piper's Wait at about 129 meters or so. And you certainly get some great views from up here. Just behind me is uh, Crow's Nest Bottom, down into that valley and just getting our bearings right. We're actually gonna be um, heading westwards because we're about the furthest north we're going to be on the walk. So we're gonna be heading alongside that uh, woodland over there. And that's the boundary actually between Hampshire and Wiltshire and also the New Forest boundary, although the New Forest National Park boundary is a little bit further uh, onwards. And that mound you can see there in front of me is actually man-made. There's a, a reservoir there. And just in front of me here, this pile of stones, <laughs> well, it looks as though perhaps some children have left it, but I've got a funny feeling that this is actually to do with the pagan occult um, there is a little bit of that that goes around these parts, I know. Uh, from time to time you just have to stop and admire the view. Everything looks so green and lush. We have had a fair bit of rain this summer, that's for sure. And the, uh, the bracken really starting to, uh, to come through as well. A lovely time of year. Oh, just about make out deep into the woods what looks like a, a deer platform through there. And on the other side of this fence is uh, Franchise's Wood, which uh, well, it's now a thousand acre woodland that's recently been bought by the Royal Society for the Protection of Birds. And it's now known as the Franchise's Lodge Nature Reserve. It is all private, but there is one public footpath that goes through it, but in general, it's uh, inaccessible to the public. And as such, it, it really has been left to uh, wildlife well, we're certainly getting to see quite a few ants' nests around here. Looks like those guys are building one around that little stump. They actually look as though they're quite small, like your garden ants. They're not like the usual southern wood ants, which are huge, great big critters and, and very black as well. But those, say, hey, they look like normal ants to me, busy beavering away. Uh, continuing to follow the boundary and the purple on the heather really just starting to uh, to come out now in a couple of weeks time I reckon it really will be a sight to behold and look there's quite a lot of it there on the uh, boundary bank 
catching the sun. Well, we're now as far west as we're going and I'm going to start heading southwards. Got as far as Bramshaw Telegraph. We have done a video walk from there in the past. If you're interested in seeing another trig point, well, you can carry on a little bit further northwards, um, follow the boundary line and you'll pass a, a lovely white thatched house called Boundary Cottage, funnily enough. And it's one of those houses that you can see for miles in the New Forest. Anyway, carry on for another 800 yards or so and you'll come across your trig point. So I so say we're going to head southwards and I see just behind me there's a little foal lying down enjoying the sunshine. They do spend an extraordinary amount of time lying down foals. Well, just as we were walking down the path I spotted this on my left. Now on an ordnance survey map it shows that there's a spring here but it looks as though it's actually a, a little wooden hatch. I wouldn't drink it Logan, it doesn't look very uh, <laughs> very healthy looking. But all along this little ridge here there are a number of little springs. Well we're very much on the homeward leg now. This is a place called Clay Pit Bottom. And sure enough there's plenty of clay around here and this little stream is Latchmore Brook and its source isn't too far away from here to my left uh, in the north about 200 yards away and it eventually well it flows into Iworth Pond and then carries on through the forest until it gets to Hyde on the edge of the forest it changes its name to Huckle Brook I think and then it flows into the River Avon and finally out into the sea at Christchurch and now into my final bit of woodland of the walk, Iworth Wood. One of my favourite uh, woods in the whole of the New Forest. Quite uh, full of ancient oak trees and largely unspoilt. So we're going to carry on through here and it'll take us out to Iworth Pond and then eventually back to the car park at Fritham. Well folks, we've come to the end of our walk back at Iworth Pond and just a short uh, walk back up to the uh, car at uh, the uh, Fritham car park. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up and a like and do leave a comment. And as I always say, if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. That way, hopefully, you'll be able to join us for another walk sometime in the future. And also do check out uh, our Facebook page, Dave's Countryside Walks. Well, we're off for some light refreshment back at uh, the Royal Oak. So until we meet again, thanks for watching and cheerio.